in the early 21st century. A mind virus infected society. Now, the uninfected must fight to survive. Will clan. Welcome to Surviving Woke Land with Ethan Quinn, a channel dedicated to exposing and explaining the ideology driving wokeness. In our quest for knowledge, join in the conversation by subscribing, turning on notifications, and leaving a comment. And please support this channel by downloading my book, The Ministry of Truth, How Propaganda Fuels the Culture War. Today I would like to address a common woke myth, the idea that time and deadlines are racist white constructs tied to white supremacy. Can we stop like normalizing people being late? Like it's not cute, it's not funny, it's not a When y'all are ready to learn about the connections between this, this, and the white American cultural norm with obsessing over being on time, please let me know, please. Because as someone who is black, queer, has ADHD, and studies African-American history and culture. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. It's gonna be so much fun. But you know, until then, we could just keep acting like that's a completely harmless opinion that has no historical context whatsoever. <laughs> Despite the smugness and condescension with which this woman is talking, what she says is complete rubbish. She is only spreading destructive war propaganda. Even though it is nonsense and will have disastrous effects on society, this has become a popular woke belief. This idea has even gained traction in educational institutions. Some schools and universities now exempt black students from completing assignments on time. They falsely label this harmful practice as being inclusive. But just looking at the history of timekeeping can dispel the notion that time is a white construct. Firstly, many other cultures place importance on time. Being on time in China is considered one of the easiest things you can do to show respect. The same goes for Japanese culture, where it is considered extremely rude for a person to arrive late. These have been cultural traditions for millennia, long before either culture had any contact with white people. Secondly, time is not a social construct. It is very real and affects everyone. Time has always been an essential part of human existence, even before any white people existed. Our earliest hunter-gatherer ancestors understood that time affected them. They realized the need to time their movements with the migration of animals and the changing of seasons. For them, time was not measured in hours and minutes, but deadlines were just as important. Missing the migration of their food sources or the changing weather would have put the dead into deadline. As humans settled into less nomadic lifestyles and societies advanced, time became more and more critical. Early civilizations learned that for crops to grow, there was a time to plant and a time to harvest. Missing those deadlines was disastrous. People have always been subject to the effects of time, and many ancient civilizations invented ways to keep track of and measure the passage of time. The ancient Mayans are well known for their accurate calendars and their understanding of the movements of the stars over time. Timekeeping devices have been used by different societies worldwide for thousands of years. The oldest known sundial was discovered in Egypt and dates to 1500 BC. There is also evidence that water clocks were used around the same time in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and China. While one of the first contributions Europeans made to timekeeping was the hourglass, the first reliable way to keep track of time at sea. Wokeness is divisive, and claiming that time is linked to white supremacy is not only racist, but also completely ignorant. Time as we know it today has nothing to do with white people or white supremacy. The reason there are 24 hours in a day does not come from Europe, but from Africa. It was the ancient Egyptians who first divided the day into what we now call hours. Today we use a base 10 system for counting, but the ancient Egyptians used a base of 12 because it was easier to count on their fingers. They divided the day into two parts, 12 hours for the day and 12 hours for the night. Time as we know it is not white supremacy, but a lasting African legacy. While the Egyptian divided the day into 24 equal sections, the ancient Babylonians gave us 60 minutes in the hour and 60 seconds in the minute. The Babylonians used a sexagesimal system of mathematics that is counting in 60s instead of hundreds. They divided the 24 hours the Egyptians had invented into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds. Clearly, time and deadlines are not racist or white supremacy. Time has real-world consequences and affects everyone. Labeling time as a white thing is not inclusive or progressive. It's destructive. 
as the legendary economist Thomas Sowell points out. He cannot take any people of any color and exempt them from the requirements of civilization, including work, behavioral standards, personal responsibility, and all the other basic things that the clever intelligentsia disdain, without ruinous consequences to them and to society at large. In my book Ministry of Truth, I explain why such destructive ideas are being propagated in society, and what the result will be if we don't stop this madness soon. That is all I have for today, please like and subscribe, and join me again tomorrow as we learn how to survive Wokeland together. Until then, this is Ethan Quinn saying, stay free.